Hey guys, what's up? It's Christine Seal, the High Level Queen. Thank you for joining us today. And I am super excited to present the Road to 25 SaaS clients with Paulson Thomas. And what's is... up, everyone? <laughs> hey. hey, Christine, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining. Um, so I forgot to I forgot to properly introduce you. My bad. Um, Paulson <laughs> is the director of business development at High Level. And um, are you allowed to tell us how many how many SaaS clients you guys have right now? Uh, I think it's public knowledge. I mean, we're we're at almost. 60,000 or more customers in general, and everybody wow. does SaaS in one way or another. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. That's cool. Cool. So yes, he's going to join us and give you a business plan to get your first 25 clients. So if you guys are ready, put a one in the chat. You know the drill. Let's see it. Let's get some likes and hearts. Pump Paulson up. Let's go. Yes, absolutely. So where all are we live? Looks like uh, I think your your page, right? Let me see here. Yes, we Let should me just be refresh. on um, Facebook and on YouTube. Okay, awesome. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, I haven't done one of these with you in, I don't know, maybe I feel like it's been more than a year for sure. <laughs> Can you believe it's been almost three Oh my gosh, that's insane. <laughs> long. That's insane. So let's get right into it. One of the things that I would love to do is get an idea of where you are. Like uh, I see Graham here. I see Mauricio, a couple of people that are just trickling in. Welcome in, y'all. So help me understand what city you're from. Uh, put your city and state down. And I always tell a lot of high-level communities to do this because what we're seeing is a lot of people getting together, doing lunch groups and dinner mm -hmm. groups and pop-up happy hours, and they're connecting with fellow high levelers, which is really cool to see. So connect with each other. And also, yeah. if you uh, take a quick video on your story or Instagram or whatever, tag Christine and tag high level as well. I'll make sure our marketing team reshares and all that across all of our high level channels. But if you all are ready for it, let's get right into it. I've got a ton of things to share to kind of help you see the business plan for launching your own essentially SaaS or SaaS hybrid marketing company, however you want to call it. Um, so if you want, if you want me to get started, I can get started, Christine. Let's go. Okay. okay. Awesome. So <clears throat> first things first, um, I've got Invisalign on, so please forgive my lisp. I'm trying my best to be as proper as I can and clear, but uh, nobody tells you it's kind of painful, but uh, shout out to my dentist. They are rock stars. Um, but either way, I uh, just wanted to, you know, get rid of my insecurities right out of the gate, just so you know. So today's goal is to help you map out a SaaS sales business plan to land 25 new SaaS customers. Now, Full disclaimer, you may or may not land 25 new customers because it takes more than just a quick one hour, two hour conversation. There's a lot of work behind it, a lot of variables, a lot of chronological order of how you take some of these things that I'm going to share and put it into action. Um, so if you are around someone like Christine, I assume you're an action taker and you're a rock star like her. And so I, I recommend you take, you know, everything that I'm teaching here and run with it full speed. To this day, I've talked to most high-level accounts, most high-level uh, customers uh, in the thousands, and we've done several masterminds, several conferences, and introduced this whole business model of a marketing company or a freelancer or an agency, a, a digital citizen of some kind in the world of marketing, being able to create and leverage a SaaS aspect to their business. And, and I've watched all kinds of different launches happen. I've seen a ton of them fail as well. So I wanna just help you avoid some of those mistakes and give you a business plan. So just, just um, quick disclaimer out of the gate, I'm a visionary type of a person in a business. 
I'm not an integrator, I'm not an implementer, but I always, always had to have a business partner or a right-hand person that always executed out my strategies. So just so you know, I think in macro terms, when I look at stuff, I'm not analytical at all. Um, so just so you have a background of how I share information, I want you to be able to take what I'm sharing with you and build on it. Now, Christine is probably the opposite of me. She's more of an integrator from what I remember. And, yeah. you know, she's, she's like an engineer. So in my mind, this is the perfect combination of perspective that you're going to get. Um, any thoughts you want to add as we get started, Christine? Yeah, I think the main thing that I would love for you guys to take away from this. We're giving you the plan, but you have to take action and execute. Okay. We're not going to do it for you, obviously. And the people that I've seen that are the most successful with this are the people who take action. So I want you guys to make a promise to yourself and us that you are going to take action. So let me see in the chat that you're an action taker. Let's go. I love it. Okay. So Let's map this out. So in order for us to map out this business plan, there are three discussion points I want to kind of invite everyone to. First one is the Trojan horse offers. Second one is go to market strategies. And third one is the launch versus scale concept. And I want to just help you understand uh, how to look at SaaS, how to look at, you know, maybe adding SaaS to an existing business you already have. Um, and in the chat, put down what industry some of you all are in. Uh, help me understand what kind of a marketer you are. Maybe you're a provider, an agency provider, uh, or maybe you're a SaaSpreneur already and you have other software ventures. But either way, put down in the comments of like what type of a digital citizen you are, and that'll kind of help me understand how to address some of the things that you might be going through. So Trojan Horse offers the first thing, uh, the first discussion that I want to talk about. Here's the business model that I've taught for now, I think four years, and we've made a couple of reiterations to it, but for the most part, it's pretty consistent. The only thing that we figured out is the right type of Trojan horse offers. Back in the day, I used to teach the same slide and say gateway offers. I've changed that to Trojan horse offers, but the idea is to lead with one and I'll, I'll um, kind of explain that entire concept. The second thing is stabilization offers and then the expansion offer and then restabilization offer. Now, I don't know how many of you have heard of the Trojan horse offer concept. The idea there is there's an old Greek mythology story of um, a bunch of soldiers being stuffed into a big wooden horse and it was gifted to the enemy uh, or whoever it was. And they were able to roll this huge wooden horse <laughs> into the castle. And at night, apparently, um, the soldiers came out and killed everybody in the castle. It's kind of a gruesome story, but the business principle that you can learn from it is that you want to always lead with one offer, get to the castle of the business, and then expand in a chronological way. Now, every single business should have at least two to three or even sometimes four or five Trojan horse offers. So for example, let's say a company like Starbucks, um, they have peppermint mocha right around December. And that's the only time they run that offer. You go to summertime, they'll run like a passion drink, something fruity, like, you know, refreshing kind of thing, but they don't run it together at the same time. And they don't run it randomly. There's a specific timeline and chronological order in how they run those offers. So in the same context as a SaaSpreneur, as an agency person or a marketer, you want to figure out what are the offers that you want to be out there in the market. And these Trojan horse offers are dynamic. And if you stay through and watch this with me, I'm, I'm going to share some of the Trojan horses that I've seen work really well and kind of help you understand the bigger picture here. Um, now, the other thing I want to help you understand is the stabilization offer. Now, one of the hardest things for marketers and agencies is to think Think in software terms while running a marketing business, okay? In the world of marketing, we often think of, you know, we know that most clients will leave us in less than sometimes, I don't know, six months or so, 
right? And eventually, because you know there's that churn, you're focused on building and creating high touch revenue, right? That's usually what happens. In the SaaS world, it's it's a little different. In the SaaS world, we think of creating a offer or a plan that allows the most amount of usage that you can get out of the customers, right? So when you think of it in that sense, we need to figure out what are the stabilization come offer or the feature stack that's going to get the most usage out of the trials or offers you present as a software company. Because as a software company, guess what? On average, it's less than 5 to 7% churn, especially for marketing agencies or marketers, right? So therefore, you know that they're going to stay with you for a couple of years if you do the right thing and you have the right offer stack. So then it's not about monetizing them up front. It's about stabilizing the usage and make sure they use the platform the right way. And I'm going to share the, the exact stabilization offer you all should use. And this is what we teach across the board. And it doesn't change regardless of what Trojan horse you use. Now, expansion offer, obviously, is like a service-based package. So Trojan horse offer... Stabilization offers, these are product-oriented offers, right? This is a technology package that you're providing. There are, There's really not a lot of human capital attached to it outside of the initial onboarding. Once they're stabilized, they use the thing. They use the system that you provide. Where expansion offer is based on talent and skill, right? You don't want talent and skill-based service offers because... You're obviously all, always going to be dependent on your ability to recruit the right team behind you, keep them happy, you know, provide for them, all these different things, while technology-oriented offers allow you to be productized, which is a whole lot more stable versus service-oriented businesses. Now, if you're starting out as a marketer or, I don't know, an agency person, um, I, I don't recommend you even launching an expansion offer. Don't waste your time going and learning, you know, don't even waste time going, you know, to learn all these skill sets like Google and Facebook ads and SEO and all these things. Because at the end of the day, agencies like that are trying to figure out how to create a SaaS offering. So let's get right into exactly what those Trojan horse offers are, stabilization offers are. Um, so you have a great idea. So let's talk about stabilization offers. So here's the way you want to look at it. No matter what Trojan horse you use and bring bring the prospects or trials or customers into your world, you want to park all of them into your stabilization offer. So regardless of your Trojan horse, you par you're parking everyone into the same stabilization offer. Now, these are the four features and the tech stack that we recommend to every SaaSpreneur. I mean, we taught this just recently in our mastermind as well. So this is truly updated. So number one is Google My Business Profile Management. Number two is web chat. It should be live web chat now, okay? Uh, number three is reviews. And number four is mobile app. And these four features are your core features, your stabilization offer that's going to give you the maximum amount of usage. Because remember, we talked about how to think like a software company instead of like a marketing agency. Marketing agencies are focused on revenue. Software companies are focused on users using the platform. So these four give you the ultimate amount of usage from your trials and your prospects. So then the question becomes, how do we leverage a Trojan horse to land everyone into this core stabilization offer? Is everyone with me? Give me a one in the chat if you are with me so far. Maybe if you're watching it on replay, give me a one in the chat so that way I know you're engaging and you're following along, okay? Awesome. So what are the Trojan horse offers that's going to bring the traffic in and you're going to basically be able to use them and go straight to market and park them into the stabilization offer. Now, here's a key. Remember, we talked about Starbucks, right? Here's a key. We're not going to ever have multiple Trojan horses, especially in the beginning, 
okay in the beginning you just wanna, you just want to pick one one trojan horse that's going to make sense for you so here are some of the trojan horses that are so popular in our community and we even have five day challenges on this so we teach this stuff even at a tech level for each specific uh trojan horse but let me just review some of these well, Miss Call Text Back is one of them. Miss Call Text Back is a feature inside of High Level that allows you to go to a business owner, go to a local business owner. Everything I'm sharing today is geared towards the local business owners, the mom and pop shops, just FYI. Now, the Miss Call Text Back allows you to help them answer phone calls, right? If they're dealing with miss calls left and right because they're running around their shop and they got things to worry about and staff to manage and orders and all these different things and, and a lot of them don't have a front desk right so you can enable miss call text back for a local business and literally reach out and be like hey i know you're not answering all your phone calls can i 100 percent help you field all your phone calls all i need to do is add a high level number Make sure some automations are set in place based on your offers, and it's just a low ticket, okay? That's that's the Trojan horse of missed call text back. And as soon as they come on board and you go through an onboarding, and I'll show you exactly how to onboard. Once we go through the onboarding, during the onboarding, all you're doing is opening them up to your stabilization offer. Okay, we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail here. So let's talk about another Trojan horse, live chat widget. How many websites do you think out there in the world don't have a live chat? A ton of them, right? Some of them have chat bots now. Some of them have something, but most of them don't have a live chat. So you, if you are a bit crafty, and I'm sure uh, Christine has some trainings on these things of how to set this up because she's she's a high level queen and she's got a, a wizardry on all the tech stuff. So I'm not going to waste time on that. So. What you want to do is, you know, even do the AI live chat thing where you can train an agent and give them knowledge base. So then the system start answering for a local business. Right. But guess what? This is exciting for them because right now all that traffic is going to their websites or landing pages and nothing's being done. People, people are not filling out the forms majority of the way. They're not opting into anything. So what's happening to all that traffic? Right you can easily tell them hey what if anytime somebody lands we start interacting with them through a live a live chat widget and kind of impersonating a live experience so that's the second trojan horse that i've seen work really well here's another one the classic good old reviews every business needs to have a scoring system out there in the community that tells them hey our business is worth checking out right so reviews are a really big one Pretty self-explanatory, but you can build an automation system around this. Make sure people are prompted for reviews after a service for a local business or even um, afterwards. Um, there's a ton of things you can do with this on automations. The next one is listings. Listings are very complementary to SEO. So if you're an agency or a marketer that does uh, SEO services, you can do listings. Um, web hosting is another one. So a lot of you that are in the world of web design, how many, how many clients do you have that is paying $50 or hundred dollars to somebody else, right? A third party, probably a ton of you, especially if you are in the agency game for a while now, but high level allows you to host websites naturally inside of the platform where you can capitalize on the web hosting. OK, uh, now I believe in the SaaS plans. This is also a new capability where you can create subscriptions around this as well. Um, I don't know if it's out yet. Don't hold me to it. But I know web hosting is a big Trojan horse, especially for agencies and small businesses that's been around for a while. You know, they understand the value of having an online presence. Um, the next Trojan horse I want to share with you is the classic database texting. So, you know, you might have heard the term like, you know, database reactivations and re-engagement. There's a ton of different terminologies. Uh, but the idea there is um, texting or messaging a local business's existing list. So let's say I go to a, a med spa for whatever reason, or let's say an automotive shop for whatever reason, and they have a email list or a texting list 
of maybe a thousand people or two thousand people i can now take a high ticket offer that that business provides me or a mid ticket offer that business provides me and text all those people back in the list re-engage them back into the business and now one of the cool things about database texting that i've seen is let's say you have marketing services that you're providing and during that onboarding and you're like relaunching whatever ads or you know things that you're sharing you know providing for them let's say that takes like two weeks during that two week time a lot of agencies do database texting to just create a wow heavy result event right so they'll during during the build out of whatever marketing campaigns and facebook ads and all that that they're providing they'll use a SaaS offer to stabilize their agency services. So I know this Trojan horse works really well as well. But remember, the key is this. You notice they all parked themselves into the same stabilization offer, right? Everybody landed into the stabilization offer, regardless of what the Trojan horse is. Now, give me a one in the chat if you're excited for me to tell you how to transition a client from the Trojan horse to the stabilization, because that's the key to winning on this. Okay. You go hey, ahead and. Uh, um, hey, Paulson. Yeah. Is it okay if I tell a quick story and give an example on the website hosting? Yeah, for sure. Let's go. Okay. To hosting. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. So uh, actually my first kind of adventure into entrepreneurship was when I was in high school I started web hosting, web development. That was back when front page was a thing, right? Well, <laughs> because I had my oldest son so young, I had to give that up. And when I started back up, it's been a little over five years ago that I started back up. I started doing web website development again because that was what I knew. And so I actually got a local client here that is a restaurant. And I was so excited because it was like $5,000 website. I was like, I even did photography for them because their pictures were terrible. I went above and beyond for these people. Okay. I thought <laughs> website was amazing. I did everything they wanted. They approved it and we launched and he said, Hey, this isn't going to work. Oh, I don't man. like this. I'm going, with, <laughs> I'm going with this other company. I was like, Oh, okay, well, do you mind me asking you why? And he's like, well, they're giving me a free website. And I was like, a free website. Interesting. And I looked into the company and he's still with them five years later. They charge $400 a month for website hosting. So I'll let you guys do the math five years. Okay. Of $400 a month, but the free website. Okay. <laughs> That's incredible. They park themselves with the SaaS technology offer and capitalized on, you know, not having to deal with churn just because mm -hmm. it's really the positioning of the offer, right? It's like, yeah, it, you know, it's, that's wild. It's, it's wild. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's talk about how to transition your customers. Like, how do you position this the right way? And I'm going to share some sales strategies and you know, go to market strategies here in a second, but I want everyone to type in the 72 hour rule in the chat. Okay. Even if you're watching on replay, type it in the 72 hour onboarding. I'm sorry, 72 hour rule. The 72 hour rule is something I made up just to be fancy. But the idea here is I've noticed, I've always noticed that if you onboard people too far away from the original closing, they lose engagement. So let's say I close the deal today on Thursday, right? I'm going to try my best to schedule an onboarding in within less than 72 hours of a window. I will not schedule an onboarding, let's say Monday or Tuesday, if I close the deal on Thursday. If I cannot schedule it Friday or Saturday, I'm not wasting my time because by the time they get back and jump on another call on Tuesday, guess what? I'm going to have to re-enter a whole new sales cycle and review everything and resell them on what I've already sold them. So this is something I've always noticed about SaaS and agency sales. So always close deals and always create the excitement, nurture that excitement into let's get to onboarding. So the key here is 
you're using a Trojan horse to go out there in the market, getting them excited, and you're going to get them into the stabilization offer. So everybody's coming through this, coming through the Trojan horse and getting the Trojan horse plus Google My Business Profile, Web Chat, Reviews, Mobile App. Real quick, here's the pricing that I recommend. I know I didn't get a chance to share much of it. It's $2.97 a month set up, right? So there's the whole A2P thing and all these things. So now I'm seeing people charge even more than $2.97 for setup, just FYI, and they're adding an A2P package to it. That's something I've noticed with Five Day Challengers. So either way, you want to definitely have a setup fee, no matter what happens, and then have a $2.97 offer as your monthly recurring offer now a little later i'm going to share with you the difference on launch strategy versus scale strategy and this whole positioning and pricing may change a little bit and i'll tell you why and when it should change but the key here is to know how to move them across so let's say i do miss call text back and i tell them hey business owner i noticed that nobody answers your phone calls can i set this up and what I normally do with missed call text back, especially is I'll set up a demo number and ask them to call that number and automations are set up. So they see a one minute quick demo. That's one of the cool things about missed call text back. You could set up a number and automations where they can actually demo the product in like two minutes. Right. So it doesn't take a big corporate slideshow to close deals with that Trojan horse. Uh, but either way, as soon as they get scheduled on an onboarding and they walk into my Zoom and, and with their team or whoever, I'm just going to simply say, hey, listen, I noticed that you have phone numbers in multiple places. You have phone numbers on your website, your Google My Business profile, your landing pages, all your social media. Is it okay if I just simply turn all those on? That's all you're going to do is going to ask them permission to be able to turn on tracking in all those areas. So then all of a sudden, what you're doing with Miss Call Tech Spec, for example, is adding a secondary number or replacing their existing number with a high level number so you can track it. And then all of a sudden, you have Google My Business profile access. You're turning on web chat because you're updating the website because there's phone numbers there. You're saying, hey, I know a ton of people are calling you, but let's make sure you get reviews in and we can do that through text messages as well. And then plus on top of that, is it okay if I have you download the Lead Connector app? If you want to use High Level app, you can. If you want to white label your branding, you can build your own app. But either way, you want to get them into a mobile app because we know that I think it's like 91% of people that use a mobile app around high-level SaaS are much more stickier than anything else. So you ultimately want them to be using a mobile app, okay? So the transition is, hey, let me turn on all these other items for you, and I'm not going to charge you anymore than what I would have. So ideally, what's happening here is this. For $297, you're giving them your Trojan horse plus the stabilization offer. You're not charging them any extra. So then you're leveraging the Trojan horse, landing them for a five stack tech, you know, tech package. And that stack, the four stack features that I shared with you all gives you the best usage of SaaS, right? So it's all connecting. Hopefully that's all connecting together. And this works perfectly for local businesses. Now, here's the thing. You can use multiple Trojan horses. For example, AI is a big deal right now. Setting up AI for a local business is so powerful. Our social planner is huge. It's taking, it's like one of the raving features right now. Everybody's loving our social planners, right? So for a local business, sending out content in the social media is like an important piece to them. So then you consolidate all of that in one place. Another Trojan horse that I've seen international folks use is WhatsApp messaging and calendars, team round robin calendars. So depending on where you are, you may come up with new ideas. And I, I invite all of you to be creative as you go through this. But the key here is to not charge extra for your stabilization offer. And you're going to simply just park them into it. And then all of a sudden, the value of what they're getting. How many of you all feel like with the Trojan horse offers plus the core offers we talked about that it's worth $300 a month as a local business? It's well worth it, in my opinion, because even companies like Podium and BirdEye, those guys charge $700 plus a month. 
and they barely have half the things you're providing to them, right? So that's, those are the Trojan horses, the first discussion point I really want to iron out. Anything you want to add to it, uh, Christine, before I go to the second pillar of our conversation, which is go to market strategies? Um, I think the missed call text back is a huge missed opportunity because it's so easy to prove the ROI of that. Just like we've been doing so many home improvement projects and I'm calling to get estimates and I can't tell you how many contractors just don't answer the phone. I never hear back. I never get a call. I never get a text. They come out and never send me an estimate, like literally thousands and thousands of dollars <laughs> yep. for one missed call. And, you know, you just have to show them the ROI. Yeah. Out of all the Trojan horses, my favorite one is the missed call text back because like Christine said, you can show the ROI. The other thing is you don't have, you can demo it very easily. You can set up a high level number for demo purposes and be like, hey, call this number and automations are firing off when you miss the call. What if I set this up for you? Imagine talking to a person in per, you know, in person at like a BNI or a chamber and they're like, hey, what do you do? Well, I'll show you, call this number real quick. This is what I do for businesses like you, mm -hmm. right? It's, a, it's such a simple transition of a sale versus this, you know, 45 minute corporate boring agency slides and slideshows to, you know, close some deals. It gets kind of crazy, right? So the second one that I really like is actually web hosting because web hosting is something that is very uh, understood in the world of business, right? It's not a new product like everyone for the longest time know what a website is and they understand web hosting is part of it so i think web hosting is like my second favorite and the third one is reviews um, but reviews are only relevant in certain industries like some industries like restaurants value it a whole lot more than a lot of the b2b businesses right so either way um, you have plenty of options to choose from so let's get started real quick on our second point on the road to 25 clients, which is go to market strategies. You have to understand how to get to market. All right, give me a two in the chat if you are ready for my second pillar of discussion around how to get to your fir you know, first 25 customers. Give me a two in the chat. I appreciate you all engaging. So the launch concept and the idea, the positioning of this whole thing is you are starting a software company and you're going to go out to the market and let the world know that you're in the early stages of launching. So in our five day challenge, I teach people to create your first, first 100. It's basically dream 100, but first 100. And what you want to do is reach out to entrepreneurs or anyone you have interacted in your network and let them know that you're interested in starting a software company in their industry. So for example, if I'm talking to like a real estate agent, I'm gonna position it as if like, hey, I'm interested in starting a software company in real estate. I notice you have a great reputation. Can we connect on this, right? So the positioning is you're bringing them in as like a partner of some kind. And I'll share, I'll tell you exactly how to position that for the future. Now, you want to keep this whole thing simple by only having one Trojan horse, okay? You don't want to lead into the world of market, into the marketing space or any industry with multiple Trojan horses. So you're going to choose the one that makes sense. And the reason why that is is because you don't want an assembly line behind you that has different variations. Then it gets really difficult to fulfill at scale. Now, you're going to basically put together a beta, right? You're going to put together a beta of three to five initial customers, and you're going to offer them rev share. And this is the way I've seen a ton of SaaS people launch. Now, I'll, I'll explain to you exactly how to position this the right way. So step by step, here are the five steps that's going to get you to your 25 customers. And I'll tell you why 25 matters a lot and why that is. So step one is doing your dream 100. How many of you are familiar with the terminology dream 100? It's it's an old, you know, marketing concept of putting together your dream clients in one list 
and surrounding them with five, six touch points. You're supposed to surround them, appear in front of them in so many different places. And eventually the long-term strategy is that you land your dream customers because you're surrounding them with content. Now in this context of, oh, there you go, Christine. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time. My goodness, I forgot about that. Um, so yeah, the concept here is first 100, right? We're gonna switch dream to first 100. Now, what are who are some of the first 100 that you may not be thinking about? Okay, I'll share a couple of tips here to help you get started. All the contractors, home services people that you have talked to in the last two years, most people have at least, if you're a homeowner, for example, you have three or four people that you normally call for plumbing, electricity, solar, landscaping, and we're not niching down. We're not niching down. I'll tell you why, and I'll tell you when to niche down as well. But in the beginning, until you get to your 25, we're not niching down. So if that's the case, how many entrepreneurs are in your world of influence? They could have had one simple interaction with you. It could be someone that had just came and checked in, uh, set up a TV for you, or set up something for you, and you're going to call them back and say, hey, I'm starting a software company for the landscaping businesses. I'm starting a software company for TV installers. I'm starting a software company for flooring specialists. I'm starting a software company for real estate agents. Let's say you and your loved one went to a restaurant. You can easily get that business card and call them back and say, hey, I'm thinking about starting a software company for the restaurant industry. And the reason why that is, is you're going to invite them to a partnership of some kind. You're going to say, hey, I want to bring you in on this as I launch, and you're going to position it as if it's a real software launch. And it is. It, technically, it is. The only thing you're not doing is having to code all this from scratch because you're going to use high level as your development arm. And there's hundreds and hundreds of features that you can combine and stack up and create subscriptions, which is the main reason of having the SaaS subscription plan, right? The second thing you're going to do is launch a community for your local city. And guys and gals, this strategy has been crushing it for so many people. Most cities, most local areas do not have a automation-oriented small group, okay? I recommend you starting one. It's not hard. It, put together a Facebook group. Maybe attach a community inside of high level into it so you can maybe have some correlation, but start a small little Facebook group for local businesses in your area and just start providing value. Tell them, hey, here's how you can get reviews. You know, you know the Trojan horses you have? Do small scripts and presentations around all those Trojan horses and show them how to use the platform, show them how to essentially set up automations for their business, okay? So launch a community in your local city, and that's gonna allow you to do webinars, which is a one-to-many strategy, right? So you don't have to go one-on-one -on -one forever and close deals, and I promise you, it'll take you a couple of weeks before you start seeing leads come in through your groups, okay? It'll take a couple of weeks, but start somewhere and I promise you this crushes it. I know a couple of agencies that are landing 10, 15 clients a week through their local communities, okay? That they set up as the tech people of the city, okay? Number two, go to your BNI and Chamber of Commerce and start shaking hands, okay? Meet people, let them know what you do. And usually over time, that's going to help you land five. Th this whole thing, what I've shared so far, will get you to five or 10 customers when, when it comes to SaaS. The fourth thing you want to do is set up a relationship with the beta. So initially, you're going to put together three or four, maybe even five customers, right? Those five customers in your beta, you want to present affiliate opportunities to them or partnership opportunities to them and follow the affiliate model that we have here at high level. I promise you it's it's probably not going to fail you. So provide a 40% lifetime recurring revenue based on any business that those affiliates bring in. So going back to that original positioning and pitch that you're saying, hey, 
I want to launch a software company and bring you in as a partner of some kind, you're, you're standing by that with an affiliate model, with an affiliate offer. Does that make sense? Give me one in the chat if that's making sense. Now, the last thing you want to do, by now, let's say you have three or four affiliates that are pushing your offer, you should easily be able to go past 10 customers, okay? The, the fifth thing you want to do is launch paid ads around your offers. So pick a Trojan horse and launch paid ads around it. And Christine, you know what I can do after this session? I can provide your group BNI and Chamber presentations and PDFs. I already have them have built them. out for our five day challenge and, and they can use that and get inspiration from it. And maybe another thing I'll do is provide paid ads to everybody here. How's that? How does that sound? Ooh, guys, <laughs> give us some yeah. love in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Put, cool. put BNI in the chat if you want access. And also I used to be in BNI and I'd love to give everyone a a little tip, if that's cool. Absolutely. Okay, so B and I, when I was in it, it was like four years ago, and I think it was seven hundred, six hundred dollars a year, seven hundred dollars a year. If you don't have that, do not worry, because you can actually sign up to be a substitute. You can go when they need a substitute. Everyone will call you to fill in for them, and then if there is not another marketer in in the group, you can actually pitch your services. Yep. <laughs> yep. Or Typically. And and the reality is there's multiple groups in a local area, right? It's not just BNI or Chamber. You want to expand as much as you can. And this is going to take, you know, a couple of weeks and a couple of months to do, but this is the launch that you want to really focus on. Go all in on it. Now, I'll send over a folder of paid ads that our team built out, and a lot of it is going to be around missed call text back, and that's the the resources we have today, but it doesn't mean that's the only thing you should do. If you want to go out there and, you know, build out your own ads, I, I definitely recommend you do, but I recommend you get past that 10 client mark before launching paid ads. Okay. Just FYI, because by then you'll have about two to $3,000 a month coming in with a really good margin and you have some sort of stabilization around the offers. You understand what they're looking for. You're getting feedback from your SaaS customers and things like that. So just, just remember the timeline on this. So let's go to the next item that I wanna talk about is the three call experience, right? This is the way I look at the sales structure of this whole thing, right? There's three steps. First thing is the introduction and proposition call. So I'm going to reach out to my first 100. So build out your list of first 100. You're going to call every single person and say, hey, I'm starting a software company. I know, and, and this only works with a warm list of people in your first 100 that you had some kind of an interaction with. So what you're doing is standing on that interaction and saying, hey, let's re-engage. So for example, my landscape guy, if I wanted to reach out to him, I'm going to be like, hey, I know you came to do our landscaping a couple of weeks ago, but I want to run something by you. I know you have a good reputation. I'm really interested in starting a software company for landscapers. Would it be okay if we jump on a call and I show you what I built out already? That's the step one that I'm sharing with you on slide one. I mean, um, on the slide, which is the proposition call. The second step would be to actually engage that conversation and set up a call. Sometimes you can do it right away and not have to reschedule a separate call because if they're ready for it, you can do that. But often they're like, yeah, perfect. I'm busy, but can you call me back, right? They're in the middle of something or whatever, but you want to set up a sales call, a closing call. And I have, I have this parentheses on the phone as my preference. So like something like missed call text back or reviews, uh, web hosting, these are not things that you need to do like a big Zoom presentation on. Those are things that most markets know what it is. So it's just a matter of you getting on the phone and helping them understand what it is as a Trojan horse. Now, the real sale happens in the onboarding call, and that has to be a Zoom call, okay? And, and it also has to happen in the first 72 hours, right? So either way, during that Zoom call uh, on the 72 hours, that's when you tell them, hey, by the way, 
is it okay if I just add all these other items because it's very relevant to the to the business to being automated, right? So you're turning on the GMB profiles, you're turning on live chat on all their websites and landing pages, you're having them download the mobile app, and you're also turning on reviews regardless of what the Trojan horse is, right? That's what that's what's happening. So this is a three call experience that you want to pay attention to, and this is a timeline of how I would go about it. So the next thing I want to share with you as we kind of get closer to our presentation being done is launch versus scale. Okay, let me go ahead and share something with all of you here. The 25 client mark is, to me, the perfect size to get to before you decide what you're going to do in scaling, right? Until the 25 SaaS client mark, more than likely, you're not going to know what kind of a business you want to really launch. Just because it's revenue doesn't mean you have a really good grasp on how the offer is you know, well received in the community, right? So until 25 client mark, I don't recommend anybody niching down, okay? No need to niche down. You're going to focus on local, okay? So here, I'm going to come back to this. I have a sheet called the Ideas to Seven Figures. I'll come back to this in a second. But here are the rules that I always want to share, that I've always shared when it comes to this. Non-niched all the way until the 25 client mark is the way to go. But focus on local businesses, right? This, this only works in local mom and pop shops. If you go after, let's say, a franchise, there are complexities in a franchise that you might not be ready for as a SaaS entrepreneur launching, right? So your launch is till the 25 client mark. So remember, that's the rule. The second thing is avoiding custom projects. Do not trap yourself into building a big automation custom package in the beginning, especially before the 25 client mark. Afterwards, you might want to you know, offer expansion services and all these different things, um, and but av avoid expansion all the way until that 25 client mark. The third thing is avoiding performance-based. Even if it's not a big custom high-ticket project, do not base it on the number of leads. Do not base it on the number of phone calls. Do not base it on the number of reviews. Do not go performance-based. You're simply providing a technology package to bring all their organic traffic in in one place. That's what's happening. The other one is avoid hyper high ticket for better volume. So like don't go selling, you know, this basically lines with the custom projects. Don't go selling, you know, $5,000 packages and you have three customers that you have to fulfill for 15 grand, right? And then the other thing about this whole business model, right? This whole SaaS play is understanding how mergers and acquisitions look at this as a marketing business. When it comes to a standard marketing agency, the multiples, uh, let's say if you ever want to sell your agency is around 1.5. So that means, let's say you're making uh, $100,000 for your agency. At 1.5, more than likely, you're not going to be able to sell that agency for more than $250,000 or $300,000 if everything is working perfectly, right? So if you have a $2 million agency, more than likely, you're not going to sell for 4.5 or more, especially if all your book of business is traditional services that are dependent on teams. Where SaaS, where you merge in this whole technology package, guess what? you're stabilizing your entire book of business with a line that has low churn, right? Agency services are around the 70% churn mark within the first 90 days. That's the problem with the agency model, where the SaaS model is like less than 5 to 7% churn, which means 95% of your customers stay with you. So when you go out to the market to ever, you know, flip your business or merge or acquire, your multiple looks a whole lot better. Now, the next thing I want to share with you is picking a narrower lane. So after you get to your 25 client mark, you then want to niche down in some way or some kind, right? You won't be able to serve everything and everybody forever, right? The 25 client mark is to me the beta cutoff. Like it's like after that, I'm going to make a decision about how I want to scale. So here's what I want to tell you. Your launch strategy is totally different than your scale strategy. 
Launch means I just want to get out there, confirm my offer, put together my affiliate group, put together my partnerships, and get feedback from the market and understand if it's relevant at that price point. After you get to the 25 client mark, then it's like, okay, I think out of everybody I've worked with so far, I like home services or I like automotive or I like med spas or I like X, Y, Z. And I recommend maybe picking one or two niches at most. Like, uh, and even if you want to do like a sub niche, maybe you want to do like orthodontics, you know, dentists versus reconstructive dentists. Like there are, you know, subsectors in, in, in healthcare as well. Uh, same thing with real estate. You can do luxury realtors versus short-term rental people. Like there's, there's complementary subsectors in a big umbrella that you can choose. But after that 25 client mark, you want to start picking narrower lanes because guess what? You want to build partnerships with power players in those lanes. You don't want to go have five different types of affiliates who are not in the same world. Guess what I always love often about our affiliates in the high-level world? Most of them are digital citizens of some kind, right? And they're mostly all in the same lane as the grand macro focus right we don't just go out there randomly and just find a you know a real estate influencer versus someone who's in the world of marketing right so same thing applies to all of you you want to kind of stay in your lane of industries so that way you could kind of maximize the efforts to go past that 25 client mark and here's what i'll tell you <laughs> Paid ads and partnerships are the way to scale a SaaS company. You couldn't convince me otherwise, especially coming from high level. That's been our number one sauce, and that's what we teach everyone else to do. Christine, you want to add anything to that? <laughs> I mean, you're part of our, uh, you know, entire world. <laughs> I yeah, I would say I just want to emphasize that if you have less than 25 clients, you should not be running paid ads. Please right. don't. Okay, yeah, yeah. I've I've seen so many people throw their hard-earned money or like yeet it out the door buy hard-earned money because it's just like you don't you don't even have like a proven offer yet and you shouldn't be running pit ads. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think that's a great advice. Uh because if you don't know how good your offer is and who you're serving, paid ads is not gonna elevate that, right? You need to confirm the economics of your business before you can, you know, add fuel to the fire, right? So Christine makes a good point, even though I'm providing paid ads, you, you don't need to just go launch and just hope that it's going to work. Like no need to donate <laughs> any more than you have to donate, especially to Zuckerberg or Google or, you know, YouTube or whatever. But, but if you have confirmed offers and people are loving it, then create content, right? Create the community that I told you about that's going to allow you to start building content. And then you can run ads to the content uh, even, even before you even run ads directly to the Trojan Horse offers. But either way, let me go ahead and just, I'll just provide the link over to you, all of you. So you can, there's an Excel sheet that allows you to kind of see the financial modeling of this whole launch. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just make sure I'll provide that to you, Christine. You can provide it to everybody okay. later. So the last thing I want to share with you is the visionary versus integrator idea. There's an amazing book called Rocket Fuel. It's pretty popular. And they're, they did a great job of establishing the difference. So why is this important? When you get past that 25 client mark, you need to decide for yourself who you're going to be in the business oh my gosh you're just it's like a library over there <laughs> that is it oh, i cannot believe you just pulled it out i have I, I don't know where mine is i have a huge like shelf here with all my books but, I do too, uh, but it's up it's up there and you can't see it on camera <laughs> hiding that's awesome so that book basically describes the visionary versus integrator and it, Visionary is the big ideas person. They nonstop have big ideas all day long. They think in the macro world. I, I lean towards that. Now, there's also the integrator. These are engineers. These are like, you know, analytic thinkers. They are systematic people. They plan everything. They measure everything. They love results. They love data. And they love executing and providing amazing service. Like So if you combine those two characteristics, 
in the leadership level of the business, you're going to go really far, really fast because it's a perfect balance that serves customers while new traffic comes in. So here's what I recommend. Once you're at that 25 client mark, and by the way, these are big companies that do this, right? Disney with Walt and Roy, Ford with Henry and James, McDonald's with Ray Kroc and Fred Turner. So this is not just like a random concept. This is how real businesses are built across the board. There's always a, a check and balance between these two types of people. Now, after that 25 client mark, you want to bring in someone that is going to handle your weakness, right? Me, I'm a visionary. I need someone who's an integrator. So I'm going to bring in a client success manager who is an integrator. Pay them healthy or bring them in as a partner of some kind, right? And go all in, right? And if you are a integrator person, I would at this point bring in a visionary who's going to be the face of the company, who's going to be out there running the traffic for you and being on the sales front. And there's nothing wrong with that. And guess what? You can hire for both sides. <laughs> you don't have to give up equity to do that. You can hire for both sides in the beginning if you want or provide uh, some sort of an incentive for them to do that. But I just want to invite all of you to do this because past the 25 client mark, it's much easier. It's much easier to work on your strengths and not waste time trying to rebuild your weakness, right? I, I recommend you doubling down on your strength all day long versus going and learning how to manage, you know, for me, like data and integrations and all these things are not my strong suit. <laughs> so final thoughts is to get to 25 clients, you need to understand the right Trojan horse that's going to make sense for you. You want to make sure you park all your Trojan horses into your core offer because you want to maximize the usage you're going to get from your SaaS customers. Number two is your go-to-market strategy. Start organically. Get out there in the community. Get out there in doing your first 100 list and expand from there. And after the 25 client mark, once you've confirmed offers and things like that, start running paid ads, start focusing on your affiliates. And there's an affiliate manager system inside high level as well. You don't even need to go do that anywhere else. Like it's already built in. The third thing is understanding that the launch strategy is different than your scale. Big, big, you know, thesis there is serve everybody until the 25 client mark and get a really good feel for what you're offering, what you're building, but stay focused on the local side. What, past the 25 client mark, niche down a little bit, get to a certain lane, get to a certain pocket of the market and be the expert there. And I think, Christine, you, did you want to talk about this? Uh, the bonus that you uh, have? Uh, Before we do that, any final thoughts? Uh, I mean, I just, you know, I just want to make sure you're resonating and your community, you know, is resonating as well. Yeah. So um, I definitely, I wanted to see, do we have time for a Q and A? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. And then also I know everyone's going to want the replay and the bonuses, like the paid ads template that you shared. And what was the other thing they're going to get? The BNI chamber, the paid ads folder. And I'll also give them the ideas to seven figures Excel worksheet. So then that way they can see the finances around it. Um, so they can plan accordingly. Only okay. if y'all want it. Only if you want it. <laughs> only if you want it. Only, yeah. Um, okay, so guys, if you want it, I all I need you to do, just one quick tiny itty bitty favor for all this amazing value drop today. Go post in my group that you just watched the SAS Road to 25 Masterclass with Paulson. Please send me the slides and replay. Okay. Also, if you're on my email list, you're going to get it. Okay. So don't worry, no worries. I had a, a tiny issue with my email earlier, but we should be good to go now. So we'll send you the replay. We'll send you the paid ads template. We'll send you the BNI presentation. Also, what kind of affiliate marketer would I be if I didn't have a special offer for you too? So if it's okay, I would love to share that with you guys because everything Paulson was saying is actually already built into high level SaaS mode on the agency pro plan. So you have 30 days to try it out for free. Go try it, get those clients, and then upgrade your account for real. 
permanently, but wouldn't it be cool if you could already pay for it with just a couple of clients and then you don't have to worry about it. So if you guys want to get a 30 day trial plus extra bonuses for me, which are going to be how to automate your agency, how to set up SaaS mode, the last masterclass I did with Paulson, all that kind of stuff, check this link out. And yes, you can also do it if you already have an account. Okay. So there's two buttons on this link. One is start an extended free trial. If you're a new customer, the bottom one is you're already a high level user. You can get my bonuses either way guys. Okay. So if you want to do the free trial bonuses and you're already a customer, just click already high level user bottom button. You'll have to put in your relationship number, but that's on agency settings. So it's like super easy to find. So thank you for letting me share that with you guys. And um, I would love to get into Q and a, if you have time, Paulson. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. I recommend all okay. of you to sign up for a 30 day trial. Cause we usually don't do 30 day trials. We do a 14 day trial plus you're getting all the bonuses. So if you sign <laughs> up, I'm going to make sure I provide all this to you and uh, I'll send all this over to Christine and yeah. it's just added incentive. And, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a huge game plan to just help you launch. And, and once yeah. you come into the world of high level, there's so many resources as well. So you're, you're going to be in a good place. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. So I'm going to go back and kind of field some questions guys. If you have, questions, please put them in the chat. I'm going back kind of in the order that we received them. There's a lot of people loving this, by the way, Paulson. Okay. Awesome. I'm getting okay. like messages. Oh, um, okay. So Christy <laughs> wants to know, does the hosting through high level impact the speed of the website? I've heard that high levels websites are slow. Yeah. I say, I say, let's do a test. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do a test. So get on a call with one of our success agents and do a speed test. And I promise you it's going to outperform almost everything out there in the market. Uh, we're, we're one of the fastest website providers and landing page providers because our relationship with Google and AWS, uh, I know from a tech standpoint, it outperforms a lot. And matter of fact, we now have like a WordPress integration and WordPress migration. So a ton of people from WordPress are now, they're keeping their WordPress sites while hosting it inside of high level so they can automate everything around it. But 1000%, we've came a long way. Just so you all have an, a, an idea of what's happened inside of high level in the last year or so, we've added almost 900 full-time people, 900. About three, 300 wow. or 350 of that are really, really good engineers. I mean, yeah. so we're, so if you haven't paid attention to our development, so Chase does like a release radar, radar session uh, almost every week now to just help everybody understand what we're releasing and mm -hmm. then sean does his sean coming at you live videos and loom videos non-stop so we're a, we're a product-led company so we take a lot of pride in stabilization and you know speed yeah. and things like that and you'll know you like we also have labs i don't know if you know what labs are where if we have a new skateboard feature that is coming out you can opt to turn it on or off in your account while it's in beta so a yeah. lot of these things that you might see or that could be an issue could be in beta right so pay attention to what's in the labs and that'll mm -hmm. tell you whether that's an old feature or a new feature and sometimes new features you know it's like a skate yeah. we built a skateboard we before we built a car but hopefully that gives you all some ideas of how we develop yeah. And huge shout out to the engineer team. I just found out at the high level summit last year that they're like my biggest fans. Yeah. <laughs> I have like a whole group of them around me. They're like, Oh my God, we love your videos. And they help us, <laughs> they help us to understand how people are using high level. And I was like, Oh my God, cool. Uh, did we lose you? Uh Oh, okay. I'm going to wait for Paulson to come back. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and answer some of these questions as well on the website speed. I know that high level has improved that a ton, like a ton. So they're always doing updates. They're always 
trying to make everything faster and better. So I would definitely invite you to do a speed test. Okay, Christy wants to know, can you talk more about the partnership with the business and the 40% commission? How does that work? Okay, so Christy, how that would work would be like you would have, it would basically just be like an affiliate offer. Honestly, personally, I think 40% is a little high to start right off the bat. If you're just starting out, it's pretty ambitious. So uh, make sure that you're still going to be profitable with that 40% before you just go all in on that. Um, and then again, uh, high level has an affiliate manager. So you can definitely set that up without having to sign up for like first promoter. Okay. Then the books. Okay. The books were Dream 100 by Dana Derricks and Rocket Fuel, Wickman and Winters. And I'm not sure where to get the Dream 100 book anymore. I got it like five years ago. Oh, are, do we have you back? Are you able to hear me or no? I can hear you. I just can't see you. I accidentally unplugged my camera and it's not coming back on. Oh. So I'll stay on audio for a quick second. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, good presentation. Thank you. What kind of business works best with high level for SaaS, a broad industry, or should I niche down? Well, uh, like I said, I don't, I don't think you should niche down in the beginning. So until that 25 client mark, I would just explore different sectors and then after that, decide, you know, which, which lane to kind of follow. Um, that's probably what I would say, because until then, you're not going to really understand and know what kind of a lane you want to really build a business around long term. So that's, that's my recommendation. No, don't niche down in the beginning. Eventually you will have to anyway. Is the 30 day trial only for the pro tier? Yes. Yes, Jonathan, that is correct. Paulson, do you have a brownout right now? Do I have a what? I can't, I heard something about a satellite causing an outage and crazy oh, stuff. Oh, the AT&T thing? <laughs> no, this is literally my camera. I don't know what's going on with it. It just literally timed out. I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, put the link again just one more time so you guys can grab it. And you can either upgrade if you're already on high level or you can get a free trial if you're a new client. It looks like we lost Paulson again, but that's okay. Paulson? I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, right? I hear you. Okay, yeah. Uh, Paulson, no. thank you for everything. Uh, this was amazing. And we really appreciate your time and generosity in sharing this with everybody. And I love how High level wants everyone to win. So thank you so much. <laughs> well, thanks for having me, Christine. I apologize about my camera. I don't know what's going on now, but uh, either way, jump into that 30 day trial, y'all. I think it's going to really change the way you do business and we're happy to help you however we can. Thanks for having me, Christine. Thank you. Okay. Take care, Bye, everybody. Bye. If you love my videos, but you find that you still need help with your automation systems or high level in general, I have great news for you. Nerd Level Academy is your one-stop shop for all of your training needs on high level, whether it's learning high level, setting up automations, automating your agency and your client onboarding, or even an SOP library. So go check it out at the link below and I'll see you on the inside.